Ooh, this one is really heavy. Hmm. Interesting one. It's a time for Package from China. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back with a new NES, or better said, Famicom, or retro game system from our friends from China. But this time, we're going to get the 8-bit HD video game system. In other words, HDMI functionality built in. So in the last couple of years, I've reviewed so many of these weird Famicom clones. Also like mimicking the PlayStation 4 one and you name it. But this time, we're going to do a little bit of a serious talk. I came across this thing, the 8-bit HD, and I wanted to search one with HDMI capabilities. And also the thing has a viewout, so it's quite interesting. This is something you don't see very often nowadays, because most of them are only having a viewout. Don't know why that is, but now we're going to test it out one with HDMI. So I really love to play myself some NES games. I already own myself an original one, but sometimes it's just convenient to have one with an HDMI out. But the problem with these devices is, that, by the way, that they look quite funky. The problem is that the HDMI signal will be like sometimes really bad, including the AV out, and sometimes the sound is completely off. And that is the major problem with these clones, or let's say custom editions. It comes with two controllers, HDMI cable. We also come including a European power adapter. It is, uh, I think this is a 7.5 volts. Okay, that's kind of strange in my opinion because it's got a really weird voltage and then we're going to get ourselves an AV out cable. But first let's talk about the controller itself. It's kind of a weird design. I did see it before because they are reusing controllers but also the shells itself. Ah, plastic! The cable itself is quite long. I'm just going to leave it in the plastic. The form factor is more comfortable than the original NES controllers from back in the day in like the 80s, 90s. But it feels slightly different, like I do like the round shape, the D-pad is very sturdy, there are no turbo buttons, kind of weird because there is room left for a turbo button, so I don't know why you made the choice not to do that. It's got the original connection over here, so that's quite interesting, so I can maybe use my original controllers if I don't like these, but oh man, so jeez, almost like impossible to get out. Also going to do a quick teardown, reset power. Then we're going to get input for the power supply, 7.5 volts. Oh man, look at these connectors, like they're already crooked as it can be. HDMI out, and that's it. Some information at the back over here, power consumption, 4 watts. <laughs> but here you can see like it's the NTSC version. So some of these are region free, but sadly, this one is only one option. And there's also no express ratio. Those wah, wah, wah. But in this video, I also wanted to do extended testing with different cartridges just to see what is working. We're going to try out that weird MiG-29 Codemaster game, Famicom, Converter, Multigame cards, Homebrew games, and of course the Flash card. But before we're going to do that, let's take a close look at the built-in Multigame card. 8800 in one. 8800, I mean 88 in one. Brain fart. The 88 games are basically homebrew games. I have seen them before, nowadays when the new generation of Famicom clones. And this is no exception. Bomb time, stuff like that. Let's boot on up, I'll give you an example. So this is the 8-bit homebrew stuff you also can find on these mini arcades, mini handhelds. <laughs> it's a really funny game because it's basically just a bomber man. That's it. Do, 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 do. But why is this guy, is this guy naked or what? No, I think he has a pants on, but it's kind of weird. This guy, like, it makes no sense. All right, so next up, let's try the Everdrive. And yep, indeed, the NES N8 is working just fine. So this is also an option. You can combine it with the Everdrive or a flash card. Okay, so next up, the multi-game card, and I tried it a couple of times, cleaned it, but somehow this new multi-game card doesn't boot up whatsoever. It's like this forever game ultimate multi-card, yeah. Ultimate my ass. Okay, and the code master doesn't even boot up either, like some weird stuff going on the screen itself, like that, and that's it. So this thing, I think it's a region locked system, and that's the reason why some of these games don't work at all. Such a bummer. Okay, so the Famicom Converter seems to be working just fine. So that is pretty damn awesome. And this game is so awful. Dee, 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 dee. 
wow did i just do a move so what i do like about this system is the controllers like the controllers like the d-pad is very responsive some of these fake controllers are so awful that you need to press them really hard the d-pad but this is very responsive oh yeah <laughs> it doesn't even freeze up i'm using that move it's more like a hadouken now come on do the move do the move Ugh. All right, so next up, the homebrew game I wanted to try out. But the weird thing is like, when you can see in the beginning, got this line in the middle. Don't know if this is a problem with the game or the system itself. What a weird game. What a weird RPG game. I personally never played it a lot I wish you can just basically fight your enemies like the Zelda games of course it's a turn-based game Alright, so let's take a close look in the inside and oh man, I really hate these things because yep, that's the reason. You don't need a seal of quality because these are just freaking impossible to get off the system in one piece. Okay, I'm going to do it differently. We're just going to step through it. I'm just going to remove the freaking screws. Yeah, that's the only thing that I can do. I try to be gentle, but always they break in pieces. And they look even more messed up than they are now. Break the seal four times. Break the seal. Here it comes. Four times. That's the way the wicked goes. And let's open up the bloody thing. It's still stuck! Alright, so I need to be very gentle because they just basically solder on the freaking LED like this. Look at it, how cheap it is. Let's flip it to the other side. Oh man, my both buttons fell out. It's going to be challenging putting this thing back together. Okay, so let's take a close look in the inside because there are some interesting, interesting things going on here. Because of the compact design, we're going to get a lot of different parts slapped inside this tiny case. Over here, this front port or the front PCB with the two controller ports. It's made it 2016, having the two micro switches over here. And then we're going to get the cartridge slot with the PCB attached to it. But this is also like the device that has the chip that makes basically the HDMI output signal. Then we're going to get here the PCB and this PCB is for the input and the output. So input for the power and output for the signal. And of course like the HDMI over here and the AV out over there. So the construction wise is quite simple. There was still a lot of parts in it, but yeah, that's also the reason. I also like want to check it out for you guys is what you're going to get in the inside. Ah, finally, I found the date when it made it and it's 2016. So this is a quite old device already. It seems to be on the market for some time now. There is one thing I really hate about these things and that's like the springs they are using. They are using these very thin, cheap springs. And when you're using this device for a long time, it's highly possible one of them like gets broken or... Oh, it's going to be like a freaking nightmare. They're only using two springs over here. Some of these systems have like four and it's even more of a chance that your cover is going to get damaged and it doesn't close anymore. All right, guys, so this is what you're going to get with the NES HDMI edition. And I must say like, I have a little bit mixed feeling about it. So first of all, what I do like is the controllers. I like the D-pad. So I would like use this thing like actually like my main controller. It's very comfortable. It doesn't feel or smell chemical. The only downside, there are no turbo buttons. 
I'm a little bit used to it. So then we're going to get the quality of the system itself. The quality is okay. The signal output is not the best I have seen, but it does the trick. No region selection or there's no poll. Like well, we have some devices that we can change out the regions and also the expert ratio. All of these options are not here. So what you see is what you're going to get. A little bit of a bummer. Not the best one I have seen, but again, this is what you're going to get for your money. Well, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit the little bell, become on the Wicked family. And we'll see you in the next video. Out.